How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a great day. Please give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys have not already. Also do me the biggest favor of all, hit that bell notification button so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on the channel. Also, if you guys would please head over to Twitch, follow me there at Douglas447. I stream there, I stream there at least once a week, whether it be for Call of Duty, Battlefield, Halo, Destiny 2, uh, Star Wars games, or anything else you guys suggest for me to stream over there. And as always, guys, we're going to be talking about positives and negatives, talking about Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla from 2002. This movie is rated PG. It is about an hour and 28 minutes long. Uh, currently, it's about $4 to rent or $13 to buy. So we're just going to dive right in. Also, I want to let you guys know, if you guys have any movies you guys want me to watch and review here on the channel, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I will get to watching and reviewing those for you guys as soon as possible. Also, if you guys would head over to the search engine and uh, type in uh, Godzilla vs. Destroya and Godzilla Final Wars, I have reviews for those out, so please check those out if you guys are big Godzilla fans and you guys enjoy my Godzilla reviews. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about positives. So this has some really good characters and really good character development. A lot of interesting themes were thrown into this movie. Especially when it comes to life. This movie teaches that all life is important and that friends and family are very important as well. Um, very entertaining fight and action sequences. You're not going to get bored easily when it comes to the action scenes. This film is also a great movie for newcomers of the Godzilla franchise. So if you haven't seen any past Godzilla films, I would highly recommend you watching this movie because it kind of gets your feet wet into the whole Godzilla lore and the universe and what a Godzilla movie should do properly. And it also, unfortunately, shows you what a Godzilla movie shouldn't do. <laughs> so it's good for newcomers of the Godzilla franchise. It has a lot of epic kaiju action, and this movie is just the classic film. Um, there's not a lot of cheesy nonsense, I will say for sure, involved in the movie. There is some, but not a lot. Uh, I also enjoyed the fact that this movie acknowledges that Godzilla constantly shows up in the rain. Even in the bad Godzilla movies, whether they be the Japanese or the American versions, Godzilla is constantly showing up in a storm or in the rain. The film is also just, you know, self-aware, and I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed all the references to past monster films, including the very first couple of Godzilla movies that were in here as well. I really enjoyed that. The film in, uh, focuses a lot on just a few main characters. That is a very big problem that I've had with certain Godzilla movies, is that they just they focus on all these human characters, and there's just like a big overarching group of people, and you never get invested with any of the human characters, which is fine, because... Most of the time, the writing for them is bad anyways. But the writing for the human characters in this movie were actually interesting. I actually got a little bit invested in the human characters because they devote time and energy on just, like, a few characters. And so you really get to bond with them during the movie, and I enjoyed that. Um, I was always laughing in this movie, both at the good and the bad parts of the film. And, unfortunately, that's... It for positives. Negative wise, there are several things we have to talk about. First of all, the characters are constantly saying things wrong. And this was noticeable within the first like 15, 20 minutes of the movie. Because instead of them saying laser, L A S E R, the characters in this movie were constantly saying maser. So they would say M-A-S-E-R. And it was just really, really weird. And I had to pause it and rewind it when I was watching it for this review. And I'm just like, are they saying laser or maser? And I'm, like, I'm listening really carefully. And I even turned the subtitles on. And I'm like, they're saying maser. Shoot the maser! Shoot the maser! I'm like, it's a laser, not a maser. <laughs> it was just really weird. It was funny when I caught that. And uh, I was watching it with my dad. He's like, yeah, they're saying maser. They're not saying laser. And I'm just like, okay, good. Stop my imagination. <laughs> um, they made a change to where Godzilla can use lightning as a source for him to be able to recharge. Godzilla doesn't use lightning to recharge his atomic breath and his energy and his strength. Really dumb addition. 
Um, the film was also dubbed, so the mouth movement and the words do not mesh weather, uh, don't mesh together properly. Ha <laughs> uh ha. -huh. Um, so that's kind of a annoyance. Also, I don't understand why this movie decided to make it where it only has one woman character in order to help crew and operate the Mechagodzilla in this movie. Like, literally, there's one woman on this Earth Defense crew force to pilot Mechagodzilla. Everybody else is a guy. And I'm just like, are, are they being, um... Yeah, that's all. you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, they also made a change to Mechagodzilla's chest gun. And instead of it being an energy ray now, it is a disintegration ray. Literally, it freezes your object and then it, sl and then it, it disintegrates the thing. Didn't like that change. Uh, this movie, like I said, it's about 90 minutes long. It takes 40 minutes, almost half the runtime, before the action of actual Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla happens. So that's a big problem. It takes 40 minutes for them to finally wrap up all the uh, introduction uh, stuff that's in this movie. Also, using the original Godzilla's DNA as the source for Mecha Godzilla for Mechagodzilla going crazy just was bad writing. I didn't enjoy that at all. Uh, also, Mechagodzilla has a two-hour battery life, <laughs> which is dumb, and it's basically just used as a plot device to help halt the action or intensify the action, and I didn't like that. Um, also, they ended up making Godzilla a cyborg, so it's half of machine that the humans create and then the other half is the original Godzilla's DNA trying to constantly take over and I didn't like that. Mecha Godzilla is just supposed to be a robot Godzilla and I don't understand why they made that change. I don't I don't like that change compared to the original source material. And lastly I'm also not happy that this movie is called Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla I mean or Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. There's no winner! I'm not happy that Godzilla nor Mechagodzilla wins the final battle. I'm like, these are two iconic monsters that are always clashing each other. And in this movie, neither one of them is victorious. Both of them survive. Both of them win. No one loses and no one wins. And it's just very... It's a bad way to end the movie. You're like, the movie's over? Like, they stopped Godzilla from doing his rampage. And he goes back into the ocean. But they don't finish him because they can't kill him. And Godzilla can't kill Mechagodzilla because Mechagodzilla's armor or whatever is just too powerful. And he's also injured. I'm just like... The resolution, the conclusion of the movie just feels like, Hey, there's a part two coming. And I'm just like, I don't want to see part two. I came to see part one and that's all I wanted was a one and done movie. And I don't like that. Overall, guys, I'm going to give Godzilla against Mechagodzilla from 2002 a 6 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video or stream.